Say you're walking down the street when you notice that the big thermometer on the bank says 86 degrees F, and you know that the F stands for Fahrenheit. But you're from France, so you want to know what that means in degrees Celsius or centigrade. So you whip out your pen and you write down the formula for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. It looks like this, right? So, do we have all we need to find the value of C, the degrees Celsius? We do, because we have the value of F. We saw it on the thermometer. F is 86 degrees. So it's a simple exercise in evaluation. If you have trouble with it, go back and take another look at the module on evaluation. But this is almost too simple to give us any trouble. All we have to do is simplify the terms, cancel out to get rid of the fraction, and we have our answer. 86 degrees Fahrenheit equals 30 degrees Celsius. That was easy. You know why? Because we used a formula for C, a formula where C was already isolated by itself on one side of the equation. But suppose you visit France and the bank there tells you the temperature in degrees Celsius and the temperatures drop to 28 degrees. Can you use the same formula to find the value of F to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit? Yes, you can, but it's harder because you have to solve a linear equation and one with fractions. Let's do it. Follow this problem very closely because we're going to use the steps twice in this module. First, simplify the fraction. The only denominator is 9, so the least common denominator is 9. We multiply both sides by 9 and then cancel out the fraction. Now what? We saw how to deal with what we have left in the module on harder linear equations. You can review it if you have to. With the fraction gone, the problem becomes very direct. We multiply it out then add 160 to both sides in order to leave the 5F by itself. But we don't want 5F, we only want F, so we divide both sides by 5, which gives us F equals 412 over 5, or 82 and 2 fifths degrees. But while you're standing there in front of the bank furiously calculating, the temperature rises to 29 degrees Celsius, and you have to do each step all over again, and again for 30 degrees, or 31, or 32. Is there an easier way? We have a formula for C. Using just what we already know, can we twist that formula around? Can we create a formula with only F on one side? One that asks the question, what does F equal? Yes, we can. And by doing it, we take a very big algebraic step forward. Why? Because for the first time, we're taking a linear equation which contains two letters, picking one letter as our variable and solving for it. We find out what that variable equals. Here, we solve for f. How in the world can we do that? The same way we solve any other equation, except for one thing. We solve for only the one variable, and we treat the other variable, the letter c, just as if it were a number. We use exactly the same steps we did in working out this problem a few minutes ago, with only one small difference. In that case, we substituted 28 degrees for C. In this case, C is just C, but we treat it the same as if it were a number. Watch how we solve both problems at the same time and in the same way. Remember, we're solving for F, and the only difference is that C equals 28 in problem 1, and C is just C in problem 2 we find the least common denominator. It's 9. So we multiply both sides by 9 and cancel out to get rid of the fraction. Now simplify the two problems the same way. 9 times 28 becomes 252, but 9 times c is just 9c. With no more fraction, we can get on with the next step. 
isolate the 5f by itself on one side. We have to move the negative 160 by adding a positive 160 to both sides, leaving us with our variable all alone on the right. We have 5f, we want 1f, which is just plain f. So we divide both sides by 5 and cancel out on the right to have just plain f. What does that give us in problem 2? A formula for f using exactly the same steps that gave us 412 over 5 in problem 1, or 82 and 2 fifths, the same answer we got earlier, exactly those same steps gives us a formula for finding f in any and every case. What is f equal? 9 times c plus 160 divided by 5. If the value of c, the degrees Celsius or centigrade, is 28, we substitute 28 for c in the equation. If 29 degrees, then we substitute 29 for c. And the formula gives us the numerical value of f. The formula is useful in dealing with temperatures. But what we did in creating that new formula is useful for much more than just calculating temperatures. Look what we did. We took an equation which contains several letters. We picked one letter, f, as our variable. And we solved for f by treating any other letter just as if it were a number. And it doesn't matter how many different letters there are in an equation. We can pick any one letter as our variable and solve for that letter. And we do it by treating all the rest of the letters as if they were numbers. Try solving this equation for the variable c. At first it looks impossible, of course, but it isn't. Just use what you know and go one step at a time. Remember, you're solving for c. The other letters? Handle them as you handle numbers and you'll get it right. Pause the show and give it a try. When you have your answer, click play again and we'll work it through together. How'd you do? Did you use steps something like these? Remember, it's the C we're after. Everything else we treat as numbers and move to the other side. Think of it like this. Step one, remove 4b squared y to the other side by subtraction. Step two, Remove 3x to the other side by division, leaving only c. Sound familiar? Let's do it. Step 1. To move the 4b squared y, we subtract 4b squared y from both sides, leaving a negative 4b squared y on the left. Step 2. To remove 3x to the other side, leaving the c all alone, we divided both sides by 3x. It cancels out on the right to leave just c, which is exactly what we were after. And we can't simplify the expression on the left any more than it is, so we leave it. So that's our answer, the formula for c. In some cases, there might be an extra step. For example, we have an equation which contains several letters. Just as before, we pick one letter as our variable. We solve for just that one letter, and we treat all the others as numbers. But the letter we're solving for appears more than once in the equation. What do we do about that? The same thing we always do. We use what we've learned and we go one step at a time. Getting all the m's onto one side is certainly no problem. We just move the negative mz by adding a positive mz to both sides. But how do we get the m on its own, since it appears twice in our expression on the left? Remember your distributive law? It says that these two expressions are equal. So we can use that idea to rewrite our equation. Later, you're going to call this factoring, but for now, just think of it as the distributive law in reverse. Now we're ready to isolate the m by division. We divide both sides by y plus z, canceling out the y plus z on the left to leave just m, and our answer. Does that take some of the mystery out of solving formulas? Just be sure which letter it is that you're solving for, and treat the rest like numbers. I think you're ready for a tougher example. For this one, we'll have to use everything from this module plus the ideas from the module on harder linear equations, where we learned about equations with fractions. Can you do it by yourself? Follow these steps and see if you can come up with an answer. Pause the program and give it a try. When you're ready to compare answers, click the play button again. This was a pretty hard problem. Did you solve it with steps like these? We can start by applying the distributive law to the right side, which gives us an equation with three fractions. To make more progress, the fractions have got to go. So to simplify the fractions, 
we look for the least common denominator, which is 20RS. We multiply both sides of our equation by 20RS. Remember, that means multiply every term on both sides. The result makes the equation look even more complicated at first, but now we can cancel, get rid of those fractions. and come up with a much simpler result. Since we're solving for r, we now want to get all the r's together, so we add a positive 35rp to both sides. which leaves us with an r in both terms on the left side and nowhere else. Does this look familiar? Can we put the 12sa and the 35p inside parentheses and pull out the r and put it outside of parentheses? This is the backwards distributive law, or factoring at work. We have one last step. How do we get that r all by itself? Division. We divide both sides by 12sa plus 35p. We can now cancel everything out on the left except for the r, and we've got it, the formula for r. Notice that there's no canceling to be done on the right because of the plus sign. Notice also that we didn't use a single operation that we haven't used before, but we haven't had to use so many in one problem before. But don't worry, you can get used to that by trying more examples from your textbook right away to keep the steps fresh in your mind. Just take them step by step. Practice on the problems in your book until even the problems that look really complicated become easy. And don't worry, they will.